Hey there, so you want to start learning how to code? You've been learning about it, you're interested, maybe you want to switch careers, maybe you want to uh, enhance your career, or maybe you just want to pick up a new hobby. So today I'm going to be teaching about how to start coding now, how to set up your coding environment. And I'll teach you three different ways to start setting up your coding environment and uh, actually writing your code. And I hope this is helpful. I hope it gives some good foundations and good introduction and give you a good background on how you can start coding in your in your computer, in your laptop, and wherever you want to code. So let's begin. My name is Henrik. I'm here to teach you how to program your own applications, stress less, build more, save time, and improve lives and the lives of others. All right. So before we get started, I also want to share that I have a free programming guide called my Personalized Finance App Programming Guide. It's a 12-step guide and it teaches you how to go from no coding experience to building your first app and basically what you do in this application is you take your credit card transactions and then you can organize them in different budget categories so you know how much you're spending i think this is a really fun app and this guide will teach you how i would think about programming this app so i hope it's helpful for you the link is in the description and if you download it and pay attention to what it says then you will definitely learn some fundamental programming concepts. All right, so you want to start coding? Uh, one of the first questions that I see people ask about this is, which, which programming language should I learn first? I think that's the first thing you need to learn before you start coding in your own coding environment because every language has, its, has different coding environments. And uh, to figure out what your programming language is, you need to figure out what you want to build. Do you want to build a website? Then you should learn JavaScript. If you want to do machine learning or AI, then you should learn Python. Or if you want to uh, do embedded systems or microcontrollers or work with an Arduino, then you should learn C. Or if you want to build an Android app or GUI, then maybe Java is better. So you see there's different kinds of um, programming languages that are good for what you're trying to build. So figure first, figure out first what you want to build and then figure out what programming language is best suited for that, uh, for the thing that you're trying to build. And if you don't have a particular goal in mind, you just want to start coding, I always recommend C. This is the programming language I learned in university. And I think it gives you a good background on how computers work and also it gives you a good background um, in terms of programming because it will teach you some lower level ways of coding. And then when you start learning other languages like Java or Python, then uh, those languages seem a lot easier. So this was my experience. I coded in C for a long time. That was like the only language that I, know, that I learned. And then when I went to my job, they taught me, they told me to program in Python and Java, JavaScript. And then I was able to do it because uh, I, I had a good background in C. So that's my recommendation. Uh, I do have two two different videos that I did during my workshop last week that you can actually go through. So I have this 10-day programming workshop series where I teach some basic programming ideas, concepts, and one of uh, two of the questions were which programming language programming language should I learn first and why you should learn C and I talk about those more in depth. So if you want to check those out, you can check out those videos. All right, so three basic things that you need in order to start coding and run your code. You need to have one, a code editor. This is how you can edit your code and you can type in your code. This is when you actually start coding. Then you need a way to compile or build your code. And then uh, this basically it translates your the what you wrote into a code that your computer understands. And then their computer can execute your code. And then last thing you need to, you need to have a way to execute your code or a way to run your code. And I'll go through all three and I'll go in particular with C as an example. And then I'll go I'll st at the end of the video, I'll talk about what an IDE is or an integrated development environment. Okay, so if you're um, coding for the first time, uh, you can always use a code editor that's built in into your OS. So for Windows, you can use Windows Notepad that's really basic, or maybe you could use Notepad++. This is what I use a lot in my work. It's actually pretty good, and I actually use it a lot, even though I have an IDE 
even though I have multiple IDEs at work, I, I use Notepad++. I also used it in my previous job. And then if you have Mac, you can code your application or your program through an application called TextEdit. So those are some basic tools you can use that's already in your computer or laptop. Uh, you can't use Word document though because Word document saves your files in a docx or a doc file, dot doc file. So you can't use those, but you can use a really basic text editor. And that's your first one, your code editor. All right, so your next one is you need a compiler. So for C, we have this compiler called GCC. This is the one that I grew up using. I've been using it for a long time. And it's really basic. I can show you an example later. Uh, there's also another one called Clang or C Lang. Some people like it, like to call it. I actually haven't heard of this one uh, until recently, uh, ironically. Well, you can also use Clang to uh, compile your code. I heard that Clang tends to have more clear error messages. So that's just to keep that in mind. But GCC is one of the main standards. that Everyone knows GCC. So I, I personally am used to GCC, and I just like to use that one. But you can use Clang if you want. All right, so let's actually start coding. I'll do the code editor portion, and then I'll do the uh, running portion. I'll do the compiling, uh, compile, uh, compile it first, and then I'm gonna run it. All right, so here we can create a file here. I'll just call it main.main.c. Main oh yeah, VI is another code editor you can use. It takes some while to get used to, and you have to look up how to use it. Uh, but that's a that's a helpful one you can use when you're in terminal. Okay, so let's type in a f the first line of our code. And then you can compile your code with GCC. So GCC, main.c. And then it produces an executable file called a.out. You can see it here. And this is basically your codes translated into computer <laughs> And then your computer can actually run the code. So let's go to eight. Let's run a dot out. A dot out. And there you go. So it says hello world. So that's how you can edit your code and then compile it and then you can run it. So that's a really basic way. All right. Next, I'm going to talk about how you can combine all three into one. And this is called an integrated development environment or IDE. So there's two that I, I'm going to teach about today. One is an online IDE, and you can use this in your browser. So one that I like to use is REPL IT. And you can actually go into my REPL profile, Henrik M. Dev, and then you can see my REPLs. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but you can see my REPLs. And then you can load one of my programs, and you can actually run it. So this was a program that I used in my, one of my other videos. And basically, it does the quadratic formula for you. So you can do REPL. You can use REPL IT. You can use it in different coding uh, devices. You can use it in your laptop. I used it in my tablet. And then I'm a, I can use it in a, a Mac or a Windows. Anywhere that has a browser, you can use this. I, even use a, I was even able to use this on my phone. So that's the advantage of using an online IDE is you can code in one one device and then you can easily code in another device and then have the same code there in front of you. All right, I'll just show you an example. So this is what it looks like when you log in. You can go to your REPLs and you can go into your you can go into your project and here I have main.c. These are the first lines of my program. And then you can execute it. If you execute it, it runs in the console down here. So you have your code editor, and then the compiler, which is make-s, it will compile your code, and then it runs your code, .main. So it's really fast. This is what I like about IDEs. It compiles, it's a place you can edit, and then you can also see the output of your program. So it's really simple, really easy, really fast, and you don't have to worry. You can just do everything here. It's an environment for you to code. And you can actually move these around in, uh, in REPL IT. So if you, if you want to have more of your actual program file, you can do that. And then you can see the output in this window. All right, but my favorite way to code is to code locally. I don't like using online uh, IDEs because sometimes you run you lose internet and then you're, you don't know what's going to happen to your file at that point. 
and sometimes it takes a while to load the code but if you do it locally if you code locally it's just there in your computer it's really fast and i think it's a lot simpler so you can go to visual studio code and you can download it here this is a a, a very popular ide visual studio code and what's nice about this is you can use it anywhere you can use it in different kinds of computers and you can use this IDE. I use it at work, and a lot of people are using it at work. So if you start learning it in your own home personal computer, and then you get a job, you can already say that you already use Visual Studio Code. And then you feel like you're working at home, or you <laughs> you feel like you're working uh, in a you're in an, in an environment where you're already used to. So if you want, if you, I think I would recommend using Visual Studio Code to uh, start coding. So we can download this. All right, so it's downloaded, and then you can see it right here. You can unzip it, and then you can put it in your applications. Then you can go in your applications and open it like a regular Mac application. You will get this notice about that it's an app from the internet, and are you sure you want to open it? You can say yes. And here is Visual Studio Code. And to start coding in C, you just need to open the folder that you are coding in. So I was coding in my personal, <laughs> in this uh, directory, Henrik MDev. And then you say, yes, I trust the authors because I'm the, I'm the one who created this folder. And there you go. You see the files that we created, the a.out and the main.c. Let's open main.c. And there you go. You can see the code that I wrote earlier. And I like it because it looks pretty. It has color coded, it has color code on it. And before we we compile and run it you need to install some extensions so you need to install the c plus c plus plus extension pack we install that and then you should also install the code runner so you can run the code all right so now you can actually run it but i think the default setting when you install it is debug so just make sure you're using the run code. And there you go. It actually ran it already. So it says, hello world. And just to prove to you that it's actually compiling the code and running it, I can just change it here. And then you'll see this dot here. And you need to just save it and then run it. Oh yeah, after you save it, the dot will disappear. And then you can run it again. And there you go. Hello there. And it says exit equals zero. Exit with code equals zero. That means that it code it compiled and ran and uh, everything's all good but if you were to mess this up say you you messed up the function here then it will say code equals one and it'll tell you the error that happened all right so that's how you start coding now and i hope this gets you started and uh, maybe you downloaded my personal personalized finance app guide and one of the first steps is setting up your coding environment so hopefully this video is helpful for you yeah, and if you haven't downloaded it uh, please download my personalized finance app programming guide and I think it's really helpful because if you want to learn how to program you need to build your own applications you need to build your own programs and this is how it was for me in university. We had a lot of projects and that's how I got better and better at programming and how I got a really good grasp on my programming language. All right. So thank you for watching and please uh, like, sub share and subscribe. And I hope this is really helpful for you. Peace.